And they do get a pattern, too, in the wintertime. They'll go from one home to another home to another home because those people are actually feeding them, and that's where they will get their food source. They won't even think to oh, go sure. and, like a bird, when a bird is going to fly south, they know the stops that they'll go to each home. So they ask people not to even get a bird feeder unless they're going to keep it full. Because oh, the sure. birds actually are set on that area of obtaining food. Right, they had yeah. become dependent, and mm -hmm. I suppose the deer do too. Exactly. So interesting yeah. thought. So I want to kind of step back about each person. Mm -hmm. And there are some people that have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. and we talked a little bit on that, that the symptoms of that are, they overlap with Lyme's as well. Mm -hmm. And each of us don't have to have a set bulletproof look to right. the actual tick. So if you'd like to elaborate on that, that'd be sure. great. Well, um, probably the first point is that Lyme, like you said, looks very different person to person. Mm -hmm. And that has a lot to do with um, who got bit because sure. we're all very different. Mm -hmm. um, it also has to do with the strain of bacteria that infected you okay. because some of these bacterial strains mm -hmm. of the Lyme organism are m much more likely to make you sick than others. Mm -hmm. Some will only give you that rash. Sure. And, but we can't tell looking at a person who's got the bad stuff and who's got a mild case. Okay. Um, and because this bacteria could end up in any part of your body, mm -hmm. what the symptoms you have are going to depend on where it landed. Oh, okay. I like people to know, though, a lot about the rash, and that's why I brought my little poster, if I might. Yes, please. Uh, the first thing that people should know about the rash is that 30% of patients with Lyme disease never had a rash. Oh, that's amazing. It is amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And so those people who have Lyme without a rash, they are typically... Sh show up as like a summertime flu oh, because they have fever and mm -hmm. chills and headache and they feel like a truck ran over them, mm -hmm. but it's summer. Yes. And um, physicians are supposed to remember that that could be Lyme disease okay. and even treat as if it were mm -hmm. um, because tests won't be helpful at that um, stage of the illness. But for the people who get a rash, mm -hmm. The next most important point is to realize that that bullseye rash that people talk about. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to look not for. Not very common. Okay. Not very common. In fact, mm -hmm. it shows up probably 20% of the time. Oh, okay. And so the most common rash is an oval rash. Okay. And so it can be a deep red color like here, mm -hmm. or it can be a very faint. But those are all erythema migrans rashes. And... Other uh, things to know about that rash is that sometimes you can even see that central bite site, mm -hmm. but people will confuse that and think it's a spider bite. Sure. And here's an example of where it looks like you can almost imagine that bite. Yes. Now, in that rash, that very, very red one, um, had I not known that it was a Lyme rash, I would have thought that that was cellulitis. Oh. And the reason it's important to not make that mistake mm -hmm. is the antibiotic that you use for cellulitis is not at all effective in Lyme disease. Oh, so, so they would progressively get worse. Exactly. Yes. And so physicians are encouraged, if you live in a high Lyme area, mm -hmm. if you think you're looking at cellulitis, perhaps it's best to choose an antibiotic that would take care of Lyme and cellulitis. Okay. So you can cover all the bases, so mm -hmm. to speak. Yes. Because um, you don't want it to get worse. Oh, absolutely not. Because there's nothing not. worse than letting limes go. Right. Because some of the people were saying that it starts to affect their joints. Yes. And very, very painful. You think you have arthritis. Mm -hmm. And to get it to that, that stage is not healthy for that person. Oh, no, it's not. And mm -hmm. in fact, Lyme is interesting. And when it was first discovered, it was that group of children 
in one little area that were all getting diagnosed with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, which is a fairly rare condition. Mm -hmm. And so someone was kind of thinking, isn't that odd? And so eventually there was some investigative work and mm -hmm. they thought, oh, this is associated with a rash. And, and so they named it Lyme arthritis. Oh. But as time went by, they realized that people had other problems. They had heart problems. They had n problems with their nervous system. They mm -hmm. had vision problems. And so then it, instead of Lyme arthritis, it became Lyme disease. Oh, okay. And yeah. so it's very, it can be a very dramatic illness when it's allowed to progress. Mm -hmm. And that's why I am so interested in doing physician education. Yes. Because if we get the diagnosis correct mm -hmm. early on, patients will do better. Yes. But if we make that mistake when they first come to us, mm -hmm. then it's going to be harder. It's going to be harder for us to recognize Lyme disease, mm -hmm. and it's going to be harder for the patient to get well. Sure. And so that first, the first crack at it is when we want to get it right. Yeah, that'd be great. So you actually were practicing as a family physician. Mm -hmm. You took a step back, and now you're also going more administrative and teaching the physicians and educating them so that they can help their patients as well. Exactly. I put on um, educational programs for physicians that are accredited, mm -hmm. and those are called continuing medical education courses. Okay. And so physicians will come and learn uh, based on the science. Yes. Um, I also do the similar programs for chiropractors okay. and nurses, mm -hmm. and it's intriguing in that the Wisconsin Chiropractic Association has me usually come for six hours. Um, I've done that twice, and I have to say six hours is a long time to talk about Lyme disease. Yes. Um, but I was surprised that um, the chiropractors wanted to hear about the antibiotic treatment, mm. um, which, you know, normally I would think, oh, they're not going to be interested. Right. But what they're telling me is they are finding so many patients with Lyme disease mm -hmm. that they want to have a, some basic understanding about the antibiotics. Sure. And when I talk to the chiropractors about, well, how are you finding these people? Mm -hmm. um, the best and most frequent response that I got was, well, they're the people who don't respond to my therapies. Oh, okay. And so mm -hmm. I liked that that, that was their approach, mm -hmm. and, I, and I really tip my hat to them. Yes. Um, but so I like to teach any health professional who wants to learn. Mm -hmm. um, if I had more time, I'd have courses for pharmacists and mm -hmm. psychologists because especially um, in children, there can be a lot of psych psychiatric symptoms with Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. And so some of these kids are getting mislabeled with ADHD sure. um, when they really have Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned with fibromyalgia, one of the problems with diagnosing Lyme disease is that it, it mimics so many other conditions. Mm -hmm. And when those symptoms overlap, it's hard to really tease things out. Yeah. But if you look for the small details, mm -hmm. then you can usually sort things out mm -hmm. better. Yes. But it's, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want people to be pointing their fingers at physicians and saying, oh, you did it wrong. Mm -hmm. um, because yeah. sometimes it really takes a little bit of uh, time and more detailed questions to really figure things out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to I know that you're, a lot of physicians are limited on their time with patients, and mm -hmm. if you're not forthright in coming, oh, I just went up to Duluth, you know, and we walked on the trails or anything like that, then they aren't actually knowing what your habits are or what you had just done to even think in that line, too. Yes, that can be... Um the exposure history can be helpful if it's positive. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, doc, I had a tick bite. You know, that's kind of nice. Yes. But when it's negative, mm -hmm. then we sometimes make the false assumption that Lyme isn't a possibility. Okay. But especially when we are in an area where we say that Lyme is endemic, mm -hmm. then, you know, just your daily life, you know, puts you at some degree of risk. Exactly. And so... History is important, but it can be misleading, mm -hmm. and especially um, when people are rushed. Yes. The other thing about Lyme, though, especially as it gets further down the road, is mm -hmm. sometimes people have difficulty thinking. 
Oh. And we call those cognitive problems. Mm -hmm. And so patients might fully intend to tell the doctor everything, but they get kind of rattled or they forget. Oh, sure. And so um, I always advise people, if you're thinking you might have Lyme disease, mm -hmm. you know, make sure that you have a clear list of your symptoms yes. and a timeline mm -hmm. because that helps doctors sort things out. Sure. And what we would do is we would actually write down all the questions that would come to mind so that you'd have them all there yes. ready. And within that, that certain amount of time to talk with the doctor, you have your list right. yeah, made up.